Hello, Sales Nation. I'm your host, Will Barron, and welcome to another episode of the Salesman Podcast. Before we get into today's episode with Karen, just a quick apology, and you will understand, I'm sure. Uh, this week, I promised that we were going to shift to a daily schedule of shows and daily videos on YouTube. Uh, Long time listeners will know because I've mentioned it in shows and in intros and that in the past. My mum passed away after a long battle with cancer. Uh, this week. So we've had the funeral and we, we've done all that now. And so that put me back a week, essentially. So from this Monday forward, we will be a daily podcast, five interviews a week, something exciting, special on a Sunday, which is going to be new to all of you. And then I'm going to do a Q&A every Saturday. The format of all this will have become apparent in the not too distant future. But yeah, just to apologize for everyone that's emailed me in the past week or so, you know, expecting certain things, that is why. And hopefully you all understand. Today's show, diving back into things, is with Karen Dietz. We're talking about stories, how they're used in B2B sales, a little bit of B2C, how stories are built, the the angles that you've got to take to be able to use stories without it seeming weird and cheesy, and, and yeah, it's a fascinating show. Stories are something that I'm super passionate about, something that I think is lacking in a lot of sales pitches. It's product, price, you know, what the benefits are. But it's very easy for a customer to buy into a backstory about you, the salesperson, about your company, the product, and they're the intangible things that make the prospect's gut go, yeah, I like this. And I think we'll move forward with it. That's the, the 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 extra things that go on top of all the analytics and the, I can't remember, it's left hand or right hand side of your brain that pulls all this together. You can find out more about Karen over at juststoryit.com. The books, the videos, everything that we talk about in the show is available in the show notes over at salesman.red forward slash 106. And with that, let's jump in to today's episode. Hi, Karen, and welcome to the Salesman Podcast. Oh, great. Thank you, Will. It's just a delight to be here. You are more than welcome. And today we're going to talk about storytelling. And it's a topic that I think people get confused on. It's underutilized in the world of sales massively. And it'd be interesting mm-hmm. to get your thoughts on that as well. Um, but yeah, what, what I want to start with the topic is, is there a difference between a a business story and just what we quote unquote call a story. Are there any differences between them or is it just a different way of describing the same animal? Mm, that's a great question. So I think there are some differences. So first of all, there's a lot of conversational storytelling that goes on just because we're human beings, right? <laughs> and that's how we communicate. You know, we get home from the day. How was your day? We, we tell a story about what happened, right? And, and and that's at the conversational level. When we're talking about business storytelling, we're really upping the game. And we're honing our storytelling skills. We're being, being very conscious about the kinds of stories we're telling and also how to tell them really well. So they're very compelling. Now, the difference in business storytelling that's different from other types of storytelling is that all of our business stories need to be designed and told so they move people to action. Because that's what we're about in business. And uh, so that's different than, let's say, a Hollywood story. (laughs) Right. You you go to the movies to be entertained, not to get excited and inspired to go change your life, you know, uh, or uh, take a different step or, you know, buy buy a particular product. And on that, then, let me interrupt you there. Does a good business story and this is a loaded question, I think, but does a good business story have to also be entertaining for it to have impact? That's an interesting question, and I, you know, how, how do we, what do we think about the word entertaining? I mean, does that mean we're jumping up and down and, you know, uh, uh, singing songs and doing tricks, you know, <laughs> <laughs> while... Well, the, the reason I asked that, Karen, is that a lot of business presentations and sales pitches are, and salespeople are the worst for this, it's some guy or lady in a suit with 
PowerPoint going through these slides that nobody cares about and the audience are on the phone emailing and not paying attention. Right. So there's obviously no compelling story there. Right. Wait, so wait, so I, when I say entertainment, that's what I mean of like, if, if you've got to put a message across, does it have mm -hmm. to entertain and engage your audience to be able to do that? Well, I, I think the operative word is engaging. Yeah. Right. And uh, so I think that's that creates a better picture for in our minds than entertaining because I can be up there talking about the most boring information and uh, be very energetic and enthusiastic and passionate and what I think might be entertaining and it still won't fly. But if I can tell a story that's engaging, right, uh, then that is really uh, going to work. That's going to produce the results. So then the question is, well, what do we have? the heck do we mean by engaging, <laughs> you know? Uh, and what stories do, right, when you can relive an experience or share someone else's story uh, and do it really well, what happens is that the um, people who are listening to the story, your audience, become totally wrapped up in the story. Right, uh, they are seeing it in their mind's eye. They are uh, experiencing the emotions that you are conveying right along with you, and that that's engagement right there. Right? Okay, so because I want to dive into some of all the step by step side of things shortly, but you changed the way you were speaking then as you started saying that. And I could feel myself leaning closer to the mic and getting engaged is the right word to describe it. But which is more important here when we're putting these stories together? Is it how you say it? So obviously it's your vocal tonality, the speed, the pacing, or is it what you're saying? Is one way in heavier than the other or are they about the same? Oh, I think the real difference is are you reliving the experience, remembering what that experience was like, what that story, what happened in that story? And then are you using lots of visual language, you know, the language of the senses? We call that L-O-T-S, language of the senses. And uh, in our stories, we want lots of lots. So, for example, right, I could share an experience it says, oh, yeah, I was sitting at my desk one day and the phone rang and uh, my high school buddy was on the other line. We had a nice chat, right? Decided to uh, get have coffee and, and uh, kind of get caught up. All right. So I could say it that way. Or I could say, well, you know, I, I was sitting at my desk one day, really concentrating on an article I was writing when all of a sudden the phone rang. And on the other line was a voice I hadn't heard in 20 years. I'm, I'm, I'm laughing because I'm smart. People who are watching this on YouTube will understand. Anyone who's listening to this on iTunes, it'd be more difficult. But I'm laughing because I'm smiling and I'm waiting for you. You purposely stopped and held us all in suspense then. Um, okay, so interesting. So it's a balance of both what you say and how you say it, but you it's the it's the words rather than perhaps even the story that right. so that, that's making the difference here. Okay, so right. let's go back to very basics and let's get to a step-by-step -step process here of is to put together a narrative of a story, is it as simple as beginning, middle, end or are there more points to it? Uh, and, and specifically a story where you're trying to sell a concept or you're trying to influence someone to, mm -hmm. as you said, take action at the end of it. Right. Well, you know what we typically do when we think of a story, we go, okay, beginning, middle, and end. And so let me start at the beginning. And what's the beginning, right? But when we're learning to craft stories and when we're learning to tell them really well, we always start with the end. And the end in business is, well, what message are you trying to convey? You know, what do you want people to know by the time you're done with the story? What uh, piece of wisdom, what actionable item, what is that one thing that you want to say at the end of the story? Okay. And once you've got that down, then the rest is pretty easy uh, because you'll know that you're only going to want to include the details and the relevant pieces of the story that line up, that get you towards that end. 
And then it's a matter of, after you've got the ending, picking out the beginning and where are you going to start, right? It, it always starts with some sort of a setting, right? Uh, but sometimes we're not sure, well, do I start way at the beginning when I was five years old, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, or does it start maybe a year ago, right, when I was introduced to the company and their products? And uh, so we get to choose the beginning, and there are certain ways to, you know, start the beginning. Uh, but um, and, and then once you have those two bookends, you can. It's easier to start filling in the details and well, what you want to say. Okay, well, let's look at some specifics for the very beginning then, and let's put this into context for the audience. So they are doing a sales presentation, perhaps to like a C-suite. Um, so B two B presentation. How do you start a story without you going, oh, there was this one time and yada, yada, yada? Because obviously that's, I'm grimacing as I'm saying that because it's a horrible way to go about it. Mm -hmm. What is, how do you naturally jump into a story and make it part of a pitch without it sounding perhaps really re re rehearsed and, and, um, and stale? How do you, because what I'm, what I've picked up on a big, um, squiggle on my paper here in front of me is that you have to relive it and that's mm -hmm. how you're putting it across that's how you get the emotions in there so right. how do you transition from hi i'm will yada 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 to reliving this story with your audience right well what a lot of people do is say oh hi i'm karen deets uh, i'm from just storyet and what i'd like to do with with you today is walk you through our program offerings so that you can better understand not only about storytelling but how it might work in your company so let's get started and i have this first slide here <laughs> right well, that's typically how it goes yeah definitely so when you're using storytelling though it's different, right? And you start out something like saying, well, you know, thank you for um, being here today. Uh, my name is Karen Dietz and my company is Just Story It. And you know, there I was in a cafeteria with 1,200 people. And all of the leaders were up in front of the room, right, on, by, uh, around a podium. And they were talking about this change project that we had been involved with for like over a year and a half and spent buku, you know, bucks on. And we were all gathered together because today was the day to launch that project. And what was happening up there? Well, the leaders were talking about a lot of charts and graphs and bullet points. And as I was looking around, okay, so I could go on and tell that story. Oh, I, I was almost just willing you to go on then. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, and the, what happened in that story is that's when, because I, they were doing such a terrible job, I, I wasn't involved in the marketing side of that engagement. I kept telling everybody before we launch, we got to get these leaders to mm -hmm. uh, uh, get their stories together about what needs to happen and why. Uh, and uh, people said, oh, yeah, yeah, good idea, but they could never get it sold. So here we were in a situation and everybody is um, kind of looking at their cell phones and whispering yep. to each other, some are falling asleep. And I just got this sinking, you know, feeling in my gut that oh this was going to fail and in fact i said to myself okay i can guarantee this change initiative is going to fail and i and i, I thought it was just a total crime and, and I, I vowed never on my watch again would that happen that waste of time and money and resources i mean we were into we were into the six figures that was <laughs> that was ridiculous and uh so that informed my audience about okay how I got started why me right yeah what's motivating me why I'm here standing in front of you why I'm so passionate about this I mean it's that story covers a lot of ground and on that just to interrupt you there Karen and this is a question I want to ask because I'm intrigued to answer this as well is it more powerful, again, in the sales process and these stories that we're telling as we're selling mm -hmm. to use a personal example of a story 
or is it more powerful to talk about someone else's experience because you could then talk about a customer's experience with a product versus your own experience it, it, is it situational or does one work better than the other oh no actually they work uh, both equally as well and you need both in your sales okay. presentation and here's why most salespeople uh, love third-party stories, right? Customer stories, because they work, right? Mm -hmm. They work like a charm. And the reason they work is because as you are telling uh, your customer's story, the person who's listening to you, your prospect, is getting a chance to sort of try on your product for size or your service for size, right? Because the, uh, these stories are like little mini sales simulators. Mm -hmm. Because just as you were reliving sort of and connecting with the experience that I was sharing, right? Uh, you, you you were engaged. You were kind of, you know. I, I, I was soaked in for sure, yeah. Right, all right. So what you're doing is when you're listening to my story, you're, you are filling in the blanks from your own experience and background. Okay? And you're relating to the story based on that. So that's why we say third-party stories, customer stories, are like m little mini sales simulations, which is enormously valuable. Now, the kinds of customer stories you need to tell are ones where the customer is the hero and not your company. Okay. And this is a big mistake most people make, particularly in sales. The story really needs to be about your customer and how they were able to achieve something extraordinary because they used either your product or your service. So you're the secondary character. You're the supporting cast, right? And it's all about the customer and what they were able to achieve, the difference it made in their life, right? And that's the best kind of customer story. So that's that piece. But now let's talk about the other kinds of stories, the personal stories. That just, people... just before we dive into the personal stories, from the customer perspective uh, and the stories you're telling about them, how accurate does all this have to be? I guess on two fronts, a moral front of no one wants to lie, mm. of course. You don't mm -hmm. want to just invent a, a customer. But then do you find that if you can, – can you embellish things a little bit, a little bit of polish, or does that then ruin the congruency perhaps of you telling the story? Right. It's all about authenticity, right? And in today's world – it's so easy for people to find out <laughs> for sure. But really, I, you know, that it's best to stay on the straight and narrow path. Right? Good stuff. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't use bright language and words that engage emotionally with your audience and um, that, you know, are uh, good words that help move a sale along. Right. Uh, but the story has to be authentic, honest, true, right? And not deviate too much from what happened. Yeah. So I interrupted you then. So yep. the more personal side of things, how does that structure and how does that fit together? Sure. Well, there are a couple other stories that salespeople and others typically forget about, but are critically important. Uh, and they're important because they help build trust, reliability, and dependability uh, for you. Uh, and one story is what we call the origin story. And this is the story of either how you got started in the business, right? How you got started with the company that you're, you are with, or how the company got started, right? And the reason that's important is because people always want to know, where did you come from, mm -hmm. right? And how does what you're doing today fit with who you are as a person and your journey? And, you know, in presentations, people always forget this. Like, so this is, this is my role here. This is, this is why I'm here representing the company. And here's why I represent the company, why I'm so passionate about its products mm. or services. Well, you're telling people why they should listen to you, why they should put the phone down, aren't you? Right, absolutely. And once you tell that story, it builds trust. 
And if you can tell the story of the company and how it got started, then that builds trust also. Oh, you've been around a long time. Oh, you're kind of dependable. Or, oh, you're a brand new company and you're on the cutting edge and, you know, kind of an upstart. And, oh, we like that, right? So it can work both ways. So that's really important. And uh, then the other kind of story, I've sort of alluded to this, which is a why I story, you know, all right, life is challenging, right? We've, (laughs) uh, in this 24 seven world, you know, Mm -hmm. always being on, right? Uh, So customers want to know what keeps you going, you know, I, and when the chips are down, you know, uh, what do you do and how do you carry on? And the reason, if you can slip that story in, the reason it's really a great story to share is... And, and this that- is you personally as an individual, minus work, minus everything else, you as, you know, your, yeah, your, your focus and motivation, is that correct? Right. And it is related to work. Like for me, um, what I say about my work is that uh, stories carry such amazing power and depth and resonance. But it's really how we understand who we are as human beings together. Mm -hmm. And when I coach somebody in storytelling, their stories are filled with amazing insights and wisdom. And once we work on a story, they get to experience that insight and wisdom that they carry. And truly to be able to witness somebody's magnificence and have them experience their own magnificence. I mean, what better work is that? And uh, then to be able to help them apply what they've learned and their insights and their wisdom uh, to work situations so that they can get great results. I mean, that, that that's just amazing. And uh, so that's sort of what keeps me going. And uh, so if you can slip that in, it's a great little anecdote uh, to share with people. And uh, we'll, 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 it builds connection and relationship. People will want to hang out with you because of that. Mm. Well, it turns you from a person selling to a real individual that has their own thoughts and feelings, and you almost buy into the person more than than just the the product alone, which is a powerful um, exercise as well. Yes, it humanizes the whole experience. Perfect. Right. That that was the word I was looking for then. <laughs> and then the last kind of story to tell. This is one that's um, not many businesses. Uh, really work on, but I think they would be, um, uh, it, 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 would, it would provide a whole lot of good things for them if they did. And that is the future story. And that story is all about, well, here's what we're doing today, but we're mm-hmm. doing that because we see the difference that it will make in the world in the future. And this is the difference it will make. And in the today's business, we know that people don't want to just buy a product. They want to buy doing good. They want to buy a social cause. They want to buy something that they can believe in. And so even for B&B, I mean B2B uh, customers, that's – it's no different than – B to C, right? But uh, you're company- still just selling to an individual, aren't you? Whether it's their right. money or the company's money, it's irrelevant mm-hmm. in in the, the context that you're talking about there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. And uh, so if you can develop that story, if you can figure out what that is and begin to start telling it, uh, then what you do is you inspire your audiences to uh, have a long-term relationship with you because they like what you're doing. They want to be a part of it. Fantastic.
I'm going to now gloss over what is probably one of the most important bits of storytelling in <laughs> the middle and the actual story, just for the time constraints that we have. And I want to focus very briefly, before we wrap up this part of the show, on the end of the story and mm. the, the drive to a close or the drive to action. Is there a step-by-step process to go from story, engagement, um, you know, people buying in, people understanding you, to then asking for something at the end of it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yes, it's called the meaning statement, right? And you end the story by sharing, okay, so this is, this is what it means to me, right? Or this is what I learned from that experience. And then you offer that to the audience as something to think about, to engage with, or to take action on. Right. So I hope you, too, you know, will be inspired uh, uh, to make a make a difference in your company by using our products and services just like Mary did or just like Joe did. Right. Uh, When they were able to make a huge difference in their company. I love it. It takes because we happen to help them. Yeah, it takes the awkward uh, there's a presentation do you want to buy from us like weird dynamic away because you're saying you're putting the pressure off them to say we want to buy your product and you're putting the not pressure but you're, you're giving them the opportunity to say How, I buy into what you're saying mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and then obviously as a salesperson you'd go and push for more commitment but right. that initial like everything you're saying I agree with is that, that powerful first step to, mm-hmm. to build on top of right and and you obviously still have to go for the clothes like so you let's get started right yeah or let's give it a go right uh and uh, uh what, what are the next action steps you know let's let's put that contract together you know you can say that eventually uh and uh it's just this little mini, mini transition piece that we put in between the end of the story and that close and that allows people to kind of say yes and engage and uh, maybe ask a few clarifying questions and then you're off and running. It's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And this is what I like talking about on the show, which is the bigger picture to be sale rather than, hey, do you need the software? Yeah. Okay. Is the price we're talking about. We're talking about what's important. And we're talking about the business as a whole. And we're talking about, as you mentioned, then the future story of where we're going. And that all adds a value that it's the salesperson that's adding it mm-hmm. rather than the the company and the product and the marketing itself. And that's mm-hmm. where salespeople need to be because if you're not adding value by having conversations and telling stories and doing these kind of things, you've just been <laughs> replaced by an online order form, basically. Yeah, th- right. this is This is a real genuine opportunity for everyone listening to add real value to their customers and and their prospects and and make a real difference. Right. And it is all about relationship and connection Uh, because people buy from other human beings and they like to have as a part of that transaction, they don't want just the transaction. They want, they really do want the relationship and that's the value of storytelling. Amazing stuff. Karen, I've got a couple of questions I ask everyone that comes on the show. So I want to run through a couple of these. First one is, who do you think is the world's greatest salesperson? Oh, gosh. And I, this, from what we're saying, this also ties into who do you think perhaps is the world's greatest storyteller? Uh, I think Richard Branson is high up on my list. And uh, Steve Jobs also. Mm-hmm. I think, Why? I think both of them. Why Richard Branson? I'm intrigued in this because Steve Jobs, clear is, before he passed away, his presentations and his Apple keynotes and the last minute twist of we all know the new iPad is coming or whatever it is and he turns around and announces it and everyone goes Mm -hmm. crazy Mm -hmm. and obviously his presentations are so structured, they're so structured that they appear natural when obviously thousands of hours of work from whole teams have gone into doing all that and print together. Richard Branson, I'm intrigued as because the stuff I've seen him do is more, it seems like he is just being himself and having a conversation. And he's obviously got a very good way of speaking and he's got charisma, but I've never looked at it from a story perspective before. Right. 
well, his he tells great stories, and it's not as uh, necessarily formalized mm-hmm. as Steve Jobs. But if you look at the results that uh, he's achieved, you know, he, he's got great influence skills, and storytelling is a part of that. It's just, um, uh, I think, th- because of the way he does it, it's not maybe it's recognized as other people. And then, oh, the other guy, oh, the uh, Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is yep. another great storyteller of Berkshire Hathaway. Brilliant. I, I, I feel like I could just sit with Warren Buffett in a library and just he could just read me something. Yeah. And I'd just be like sat there. But Uncle Warren just going going at all these stories. Okay, mm-hmm. next question. What is one book or resource other than your own that you'd recommend to the salesman podcast audience? Oh golly. Um I I really love zero time selling. Mm-hmm. And I uh, and I I love it because it's really all about it, it's perfect for B two B sales and it's really all about how do you get in front of the customer or the prospect ASAP right and oh, what kinds of things need to uh, happen in that relationship and storytelling is a is a part of that. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I think that's a fabulous book. Fantastic. And I, I prerequisite this question often, and I'm going to stop doing it, I think. But although you're not a sales person very specifically, you are, as is everyone, a salesperson. So you'll have uh, an answer to this question, I'm sure. If you could go back in time, Karen, and speak to your younger self, what would be the one piece of advice you'd give her to help her become better at sales? Oh, learn sales earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when you say that, do you mean sales techniques and the specifics and the more formalized aspect of it? Learn how to converse and talk with prospects better so you close the deal and get the sale done, right? So I'm an introvert. Surprise, surprise. Uh, and so it's harder for me to go out and kind of smooth and <laughs> you know make those connections once i do they're they're deep right yeah. they they last a long time and that's really great uh but yeah i wish i had learned uh when i was a lot younger i uh, how to um uh, connect more directly with people in conversation and then how to tell stories and then how to actually close sales and i think all of that is verbal you know oral mm-hmm. uh, uh good oral skills and influence skills so that's what i say amazing stuff well with that karen always tells a little bit about the book and also where the audience can find out more about you Great. Uh, so yes, my best-selling book is Business Storytelling for Dummies. Everything you want to know about how to tell a great story and the kinds of stories you want to tell and then how to apply stories. We have a whole chapter on sales in there and how to use stories in different parts of the sales cycle. Uh, so that's a good basic how-to book. Right? And uh, then if you sign up for my newsletter, uh, one of the first things you're going to get is a free download that's it, it's all about like what the heck is a story, right? Because a lot of us are confused about well, what's the difference between an example and a case study and a news report. So uh, that all of that's taken care of in that uh, in that download. And you'll you'll know what a story is by the time we're done. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, then if you want more resources, uh, and I include a B2B sales in this is that I now have the world's largest free library on business storytelling uh, resources. And uh, I've got like, I don't know, 15,700 plus followers and over 2000 articles that I've reviewed. I only take the best articles I can find and I write a little review on them. And if you go to my website at juststoryit.com, Right, all one word, just storyit.com. You'll uh, see a page that says story curation, and that will link you to the curation, and it's all searchable. And uh, then I've got you know various programs, particularly for sales folks, that uh, uh, you can ask me about and send me an email about from the website, and I'd love to talk with you. 
amazing stuff. And we'll link to everything that you just talked about in the show notes over at salesman.red for anyone who is on a treadmill trying to scribble stuff down uh, as you go through that. And with that, Karen, I just want to, again, thank you for your time today. And I want to thank you for coming on and joining us at the Salesman Podcast. Oh, thank you. Well, it's been a pleasure. I had a good time. And there we have it. Thank you, Karen, for coming on the show. Massively appreciate it. Loads of great content in this episode. Uh, so much so that I'm going to write some of it up into a couple of blog posts, I think, and dive into it a bit deeper myself because stories, you know, they're not used enough in sales, not used enough in business other than the very high corporate level. I think there's a lot of value in there. So yeah, thank you, Karen. And I'll speak with you guys again tomorrow.